Welcome back to another creative exploration with me, Tammy Collins. Today we're going to do some mixed media fun with a giraffe napkin and earthen inspired colors and textures. Here's a sneak peek at what we're going to do today. So this is a similar project to the other um, earthen inspired textured mixed media piece that I did that the recording got lost. And as promised, I said I would do another one, and here it is. This is a similar um, process as the other one was, but starting with a few different elements so that they're not identical. And uh, we're gonna use some modeling paste and matte gel, medium, and uh, we're, this is a napkin that we've sort of embedded and made sort of translucent which you can find in some of my other videos, but I absolutely love this material and it's a lot of fun to work with. And uh, so this is just part of the whole process of exploring what I can do with the, these napkins or tissue paper once they're embedded in, in, a, in the medium to make them translucent. So right now I'm just pulling a couple of different pieces. I'm sort of ripping them up. I actually wanna use the back of this piece and we're gonna get those glued down. I'm just gonna loosely cut off some of the bulk material because it is uh, a little problematic to sort of get it cl a clean edge um, and get the tape off once you kind of put the gel medium on there. So I kind of trim it ahead of time and then I'll cut, even cut it while it's still slightly wet just so that there's a clean uh, delineation between the material, the medium, and the tape so that way when I go to pull the tape off it's not embedded in sort of the glue and whatnot. And I'm just sort of playing with the the shape of this piece as it goes sort of diagonal across the the paper and just getting it so I feel like I like the composition the way it lays out and I'm just going to put some of this gel medium on here I'm using this to to glue down the napkin I like to use the gel with the napkin because the napkin is now a little thicker and uh, you know it, it's crinkly so you kind of want it to the gel sort of fit fills it in nicely and I'm just using this scraper this is actually a, a cake scraper that I got in a pack of three from the Dollar Tree I actually really love these little things they're for decorating cakes <laughs> So I hope you have had a wonderful holiday. I happy new year to you. Um, I am looking forward to lots of great creative time. I have lots of projects and ideas and things I want to do and share with you. I'm getting my intentions set uh, for the year. I always take a, a good amount of time at this time of year to really think about what I want from the upcoming year. Um, I have really accomplished quite a bit over the past, oh, I guess seven or eight years now. I've really kind of been able to cross off all my sort of a lot of my bucket list items. I, you know, implemented a, a vision board with things I really wanted to accomplish and I've been able to do all of those. So I had to sort of reimagine what my, what my new future looked like, right? So you sort of level up a little bit, if you will. So this, I, I set this aside to dry for a little bit. I used the, the hair dryer on a little bit to get it dried enough to be able to move on to the next step. I'm just taking some watercolors here in uh, two different shades of green, uh, an okra and uh, a burnt umber, just very earthen. And I'm just adding some 
color in here. But I usually, I also usually, uh, I usually pick a word for the year. I haven't settled on a word yet. Um, and uh, I take a good deal of time to sit down and really envision where I want to be at the end of the year. And then I kind of work backwards so that I have some actionable steps and things that I can clearly see what to do and how, when to do them and how to do them so that things move forward. Um, I went back to school at, at the age of 45 and uh, I was a working full-time as a marketing director. I had two kids in high school that I was trying to find colleges and get them into college and I had gone back to college. So as you can imagine, my plate was really, really full and I became, I was already very organized and efficient, but I really became super organized and efficient and developed a few methods that really helped me um, power through things and get a lot of stuff done. And so um, that's really transformed my life in a lot of ways. But anyway, that's enough about that. So I'm just, uh, I'm just getting some color on here. Uh, I'm just, you know, I, color comes naturally to me. I just instinctively and intuitively know what I want to do. Um, but if you want to learn more about color, uh, you can check out my other video where we're keeping a color journal. We're going to go through uh, basic concepts around color theory and play with color combinations and just begin to experiment and explore color. And this is how you're going to figure out what colors work for you and what colors you love and what color palettes really speak to you. And it will really help you start to begin to feel what your style is. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of coming back in again. You know, I want the paint, the watercolor to have different layers and create more visual interest um, through, you know, just how it naturally sort of moves on the paper. So I'm just putting in a little bit more pigment, if you will, and then I'm going to add a little more water and let it sort of flow and move together. I want the napkins and the piece to feel, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by nature and I want it to have those qualities. I'm actually looking out across over here. I live uh, on a mountainside, uh, on the sort of on the cliff and then below me is a river and then across is sort of a, a holler and a valley. And then there's another mountain across from me. So I have a very beautiful natural view and so I'm kind of pulling some of these colors from that that's why I call it an earthen inspired you know that sort of turquoise green and and the actual green are very indicative of the river below me and the the field across there and the brown from the trees and whatnot so I use that as sort of an inspiration for my color choices. So right now I'm just using a stencil and some modeling paste to put in another layer of interest. And one of the things that I've really learned about my style and, and, and the process that I go through is that you want to give it some time. Meaning that I'm just letting my intuition guide me and I'm not overthinking it. So for example, a lot of people might go, oh, well, this, you know, this is kind of looking a little busy. Well, of course it will at this point. Um, but one of the things I've learned is to push through that and keep going and follow, follow what you naturally want to do and see where it goes, play with it, explore it. So one of the things I do with the modeling paste on here is I kind of push the knife in and pull it out and it makes, a uh, like nooks and crannies and ridges and gives it some texture and then you just gently come across and knock them down. And so it makes those shapes have another visually interesting dimension. And so I, I let that dry and now I'm just adding in a little bit more color. I'm still using the watercolors, but I've also pulled a couple of shades from my batch of 
acrylics that are mixed with sand. And I'm just kind of imagining that these are sort of leaves and you know, this is an abstract piece. I'm not trying to make specifically leaves, but I'm giving the illusion or the impression, the perception. I want the viewer to feel like their leaves, if you will. So I'm just adding in a few colors. If you're a returning viewer, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. If you're a new viewer, I'm happy that you're here. I'm just happy that, uh, you know, I, you, you found me and that you watch me uh, and like and, and subscribe to my videos. Uh, my goal is to inspire you to create and uh, I'm trying to show you authentic, real, creative time in real time, what it really looks like. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't go well. It's perfectly imperfect. This is just a recording and a sharing of creative time. You know, if you imagine that you joined a local uh, art studio or something of that nature and you go and you have community time where you work on projects with other people around and that's kind of the idea here um you might like some of it you might not you'll learn things you like and things you don't like you'll learn to do to do certain things and to not do other things and that's really the point I spent a few years really getting lost and detached from my my own exploration of, of creating and, and making art. And this is really a, an accountability factor for me as well because it's helping me to stay committed to my time and uh, I'm really enjoying the journey of reconnecting with my creativity and what I love and, and what I want out of uh, my, just my time with, with exercising that, those creative muscles, if you will. And so I'm just using an, another technique to add this acrylic with sand on there. Uh, and I'm gently sort of scraping it across. Uh, sorry, I kind of got off off camera view there. Um, but I'm just kind of scraping it across to, to give some of the um, high points a hit of color. And as you can see on the leaves now, there's, you know, there's a few colors on the leaves that really gives them some interest and dimension. And when we come back and add some outline and shadowing, it will help to reduce some of what seems like chaos right now. Because when you start adding in a lot of colors and textures, it, it can, there's a point where you kind of go, uh oh, this feels busy. But that's what I'm, I want you to learn from here is to just, it doesn't matter. This doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Just go ahead and, and run through it. See what happens. If you are interested in some of the things that I'm going to be um, giving out as, if you will, freebies or handouts or, or just resources, uh, you can feel free to visit the, the, the description box and sign up for Your Creativity Matters. Don't worry, I spent years as a marketing director. I am not going to bombard you with emails. Um, when I send you an email, it will be something uh, that you will enjoy or look forward to. So I'm adding in some doodle and really, uh, you know, I'm just sort of outlining the existing giraffe print and accentuating it a little bit. I also recently added the uh, buy me a cup of coffee um, option. 
uh, which is really nice. Uh, it's a great way for, I've had people, you know, really want to share a way to sort of support the channel because, you know, I'm just doing this to, to inspire you and, and give you uh, some tools and inspiration. And people have reached out with, well, how can I support your channel and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd add the buy me a cup of coffee. It's a great way to, to sort of show support if you'd like to in that way. But additionally, um, I can add in um, downloadables and things there. I don't have any in there yet, but they will be coming soon. And I have been doing a lot of color swatches based on some of my pieces. So that may be uh, a place where I put those items. So I'm just loosely using a Posca marker to sort of outline the giraffe spots. One of the other things I'm trying to also do is to, to, to create things with uh, free or very inexpensive materials. Um, now, I know I'm using a Posca marker right now that they can be a little bit pricey, but if you, if you watch, you can get them on sale and um, you can buy other versions of paint markers that are a little less expensive. And you could use another type of marker. You don't necessarily need to use this, this marker for this. But I want you to be able to, I don't want you to have excuses. In other words, I don't want you to go, oh, well, I don't have the right kind of X, Y, or Z. And so I can't, I can't create this. I want you to realize that you can use and substitute any material for anything that I'm using. I'm only using basic materials here. The watercolors are actually, you know, a, a very tiny, inexpensive kit. I think it was like four bucks or so. Actually, I think I got it at Dollar Tree now that I think about it. And the acrylics are just, you know, I pick those up when they're on sale and, you know, they're inexpensive. You can buy a, a small kit and, and mix up colors if you want. You don't have to use the exact same colors. You can just use variations use what you have you know the napkins I had the napkins around from some uh, previous event that I had or bought you know you could use a stencil instead of the napkin you could try a plain white napkin and do the whole translucent process and then just use a stencil to draw on the giraffe print or freehand. A giraffe print's very easy to do. One of the things that I'm really loving about my creative exploration is that I really love this idea of many dimensions, meaning that when you look at my pieces, I want you to see I want it to feel like you're going inside it, that there's like multiple layers. And so that's why I have some of the techniques on here that I'm doing. So I let that dry and now I'm, I'm coming back and I'm putting in a shadow line uh, as if the, the light was coming from the top right, I tend to do that a lot. And so they're a textured element, so they would have a shadow on the you know, opposite side of that. So I'm using a Tombow marker and I'm coming in and I'm just putting in a, a, a shadow line.
and I'm going to do this with a couple different colors. So now I'm using a lighter, uh, the other one was more of a black. This is now a, like a darker gray. And so I'm just extending that shadow line um, to just give it a little bit more life. And you can see how, uh, so I'm just taking a tiny bit of water because the Tombow is a water-based marker. I'm just coming in with a tiny bit of water and just sort of blending and accentuating that shadow a little bit more. It really helps those leaves to start to pop off the page. So if you, you, it's almost like you can imagine looking at this and, you know, first you have like the leaves that are closer to your face or your view. And then behind the leaves, you have sort of this, um, you know, this doodle layer that will accentuate with some other pieces. And then behind that, you sort of have the, the, the giraffe layer that almost looks like it could be like a crack in the earth. And then you have the, the, the watercolor uh, areas with the texture that look like they could be um, sort of even farther back. So it's this concept of, of depth that I'm playing with. I'm just coming back in with a, a, a black post guy. I want a more defined black line. I really want to accentuate that shadow a little bit. I'm actually going on the edge of the textured. It's just going to really help it to pop. And now you can see that that concept of oh it felt a little busy is starting to dissipate because now we're starting to add elements and use techniques that help to separate or accentuate the layers so that you sort of are pulled in to the piece and so now I'm doing another thing that I actually really love to do and that's using a gel pen a black gel pen this is a, a sharpie one I actually like the uh, G2 ones the best, the Pilot, uh, but this is all I happen to have at the moment. And I'm just kind of adding in these, you know, random sort of cobblestone style shapes. And you can see I sort of jumped forward. I did the two sections behind the leaves, which that also now adds to another element of making it feel like there's another layer. It feels dimensional. And now I'm using a white Posca marker and I'm coming back and I'm adding outline to some of these doodle shapes. This is another thing I really love to do. And there it is after I have done all of those white shapes and I used a gel pen to then outline those white lines.
And right now I just want to kind of get this off the, um, the board. Um, I was thinking I was kind of finished here, but I decided to add a few more elements and um, you'll see those in a minute, but you, you can see here why I take some time in the beginning to try to alleviate this um, crease or seam, if you will, when I go to remove this tape. So once the glue medium or the gel medium or whatever it is that you're using dries, it will keep the tape on there. <laughs> so by sort of slicing along that tape line while it's wet, it helps to prevent. So there's the problem right there. So see, because I sort of pre-cut it, it does rip off relatively easy. I'm not in love with this tape. It really rips this paper. It could be a combination of the paper quality, the tape. This is just masking tape. I'm out of painter's tape. I don't worry about it too much, uh, especially in this instance, because of the way I know that I'm going to mount this. I'm basically going to cut that uh, white edge off anyway. But if you haven't already, be sure to check out the other Earth and Inspired uh, mixed media piece. I did not, like I mentioned, that process video did get deleted, but it's a very similar process to this. You could follow these same steps and, you know, uh, use similar napkins and whatnot for that one. And, and you'll see this is a very similar process. I have a grouping of these sort of same color palettes and ideas and textures up for a group of pieces that it's going to be in a show coming up. So I'm working on completing that group or series. And so at this point, um, I'm feeling like I, I want to add something else. And I think this is the best position in this way. Uh, but I realized that I needed to do a little bit more. I wanted to add shadow to the um, the doodles section. So we're, we're going to add in shadow in here. And we're going to use the Tombow to do that. And I will use a couple different Tombows to kind of get the depth that I'm after. And I also wanted to add some metallic. Um, I want to accentuate the what were the draft spots. Let me know what you think in the comments. I thank you for, for joining me and, and watching this process. I really hope it you enjoyed it and I hope it inspired you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you know uh, when I have new videos out. I aim to have two somewhere between two and four videos a week and uh, we have some very specific process or sequence ones that will be coming up for um, 
specific topics like the color journal we're going to be doing a texture one and um, I'd like to do a mark making one okay so I'm coming back in I'm not quite getting the the depth and the transition that I was looking for so I'm coming back in with a darker Tombow just to get that a little bit more shadowed I want I want it to really feel like there's more depth there and if you imagine that these are layers that you're sort of being pulled through the more shadow that's in this particular layer the farther it will feel or the deeper I should say it will feel inside the piece Okay, and so this is where I decided I wanted to add in this metallic. And I'm basically doing the same thing I did with the white. And you can really see there, right next to where I'm doing the metallic, I added some black shadow into those spots. And you can really see how those white spots versus the metallic one next to it, they seem more dimensional. And that's because of that shadow. Now this metallic pen is really fabulous in person. It does not translate in video. But I really love the, the interest that this added to the piece. And I will come back with the gel pen and the black gel pen and outline it and sort of crisp up the, the metallic line, if you will, or the shape. And then I will add shadow to that as well. I'm also taking the Posca and just kind of going around just to sharpen that line wherever it may have lost its definition and you can really see there with the shadow what what a difference that makes I'm really happy with this piece and the way it came out. Let me know what you think. Don't forget if you want to support the channel and you feel so uh, obliged, you can buy me a cup of coffee. The link is in the description box. And we're just going to be wrapping this up here. There's the finished piece. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.